The SOCOM Dodge Screener is a test conducted in the military for applicants entering the United States Special Operations Command. It involves bobbing, floating, traveling, front flip, back flip, and mask retrieval, all done with your hands and feet tied. Two years ago, I attempted this test and I failed. This test is so mentally brutal that I never wanted to try it again. But I've realized that if something's in your way that you want to accomplish, you've got to embrace the darkness and never let it overcome you. So I'm here today to attempt the SOCOM Dodge Screener again. Hard. Prime, good to see you again. Yo, what up, brother? You? Welcome back. back. I'm back for redemption. My name's Prime. I'm one of the founders of Deep End Fitness. Uh, we're here today to put Austin through the SOCOM Dive Screener, round two. So last time, the thing that got me was I let my heart rate get out of control. I started being hasty and I started trying to rush those bobs and I couldn't get a solid breath and I panicked and I ditched. So this time I've done an extensive amount of training. I've been doing long swims, I've been doing breath holds, I've been doing some training with Marcus in Mexico and I'm ready to take this test on again. We're gonna start with some breath work. And before I knew it, it was time to get in the water. So I entered the water, trying to get used to the feeling of that 12 foot pool and trying to stay calm. But the deeper I sank, the more water I drank, which was really messing with me. I may look calm, but in my head, it is absolute hell. When I did the SOCOM dive screen the first time, I slipped into a really dark place and I couldn't help but let that thought get to me. If you suck in water, cause that's just gonna happen, you got the option to drink it or spit it out. Well, I, it, I drunk it with my lung. I know, but the biggest thing is mission completion and almost tell yourself, yes, I needed that. I needed that splash of chlorine. All right, I'm ready to start. All right, on you. Whenever you're ready, go. And we're live. 10 seconds in. getting these dark thoughts in my head and like what so hard to control just the pressure of this whole test I mean I keep thinking it as a big piece you know 15 minutes of being in the water it's hard we all have a human response as soon as we're going underwater we have a hunger for air and we're in a survival situation in our mind but it's not real we're not really in survival our mind is just telling us that we're in survival it's not real I was thinking about what Prime was saying and I knew he was right. I knew it was 100% mental, but whatever this thing was in my head, it was telling me that I couldn't. When in reality, I knew I could and I had to overcome that. On you. Time. As I started my next attempt, I was trying my best to push out all the negative thoughts and focus on the task at hand, but it was not easy. Let's go, bro. Nice. All right, so he's at 115. He's got 45 seconds left. It looks like he found his calm. That's what we wanted. He's even taking a few seconds down at the bottom to just chill before he's pushing off. Those are good signals, guys. For anyone to go underwater, it's always an uncomfortable situation and that's why we do it, because it has a huge training benefit. As we're doing this and we become comfortable in these uncomfortable situations, we're fortifying our mind, which helps us with everything that we have to deal with in life. Two minutes. So that's it, he got two minutes of his bob, so now he's gonna go into two minutes of dead man's float. Notice his hands and his feet are both tied, constrained behind him, so. He's really got to work with his buoyancy here and keep air in his lungs fully inflated so he could stay on the surface. So he's got 20 seconds and then we'll start the travel. So there's no, there's no speed here. He doesn't need to go fast. This is just for completion. Going twice around half of the deep end here. So you can see he's about halfway right now to the mark for him to turn. And he's got a good pace. He's, it looks like he's finding his flow with the travel. And obviously, you know, we would all love to come out and crush everything on the first time, but sometimes when we fail stuff and then we get another opportunity, it, it gives us a huge opportunity to grow. 
So I actually have that experience from dive school. I had to go to dive school twice. The first time I drowned at dive school. But I like to see what I'm seeing here where he's found his relaxation and now he's almost, he's on his first lap, but he's coming in for approach right here. Once he hits the wall, he's gonna be on his second lap for the travel. It's looking good. So as I'm swimming through the pool, I look calm, but on the inside, it is pure chaos. It's hard to explain if you've never been to that dark place before. And then I hear Prime say, travel one, one more, more lap. lap. And I know that I'm so close. I have one more lap and I'm almost there. So he's feeling different pressure, obviously has cameras on him. We got media crew here following what he's doing. So the pressure has been on him. And so this is what it's about, is, is handling the pressure and navigating through it and following through with what your goal is. He's gonna come up right here. Once he gets over his mask, this is the last sequence. So he's gonna have five bobs to do a front flip, complete a front flip within five bobs. He can complete a front flip within three bobs if he wants. And then after that, he's gonna have five bobs to complete a back flip. Once the back flip's completed, he has five bobs to go and retrieve the mask with his mouth. And he has to complete five bobs with the mask in his mouth. And that'll complete the screener and he'll be solid. Nice, bro. All right, he's on his bobs. That was bob one. So he's got four bobs to complete his front flip right now. And you can see he's a little bit distanced from his mask. So he's gonna have to start making his way towards the mask too. He has one more to get a front flip. Hey, you still can get one more, get a front flip. Tell him to flip. He sinks really slow. Front flip. Come on, let's go. Nice. Yes. Front flip. It broke again. I lost it. There it is. Okay, reset that again. Hey, ready? Hey, dude. If you want, we could do next Wednesday, bro. I'm gonna keep going through it just to prove myself that I think I can do it. There's a degree of uncomfortability that comes with this last part that I need you to accept and just be like, I don't care. Give me that water. I'll drink it. Whatever I need to do to get through this doesn't matter. I thought he was gonna get it today. Dude, anxiety and pressure hits people differently. Every time you go underwater, you have a hunger for air and you have a, you're in an immediate survival situation. We're gonna give him the option to come back because he's right there. The reason why we do this is because we wanna adapt ourselves, our minds and our bodies to be able to do this because of how uncomfortable it is and how challenging it is. But the more that you do this, if you think of this, like what he's dealing with right now, it's like, imagine going to jujitsu you know, for the first time, or if you're not used to going and you're getting choked out by black belts. That's what being at the bottom of 13 feet feels like if you're not used to it. You're doing something thousands and thousands and thousands of military service members have done, and you're in the shape to do it. So I'm waiting for that breakthrough moment for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it one of these days. In that moment, I made a promise. I will finish this test if it's the last thing that I do. I was not ready to give up. So today I'm focusing on building CO2 tolerance. And it's tough because you're moving a whole lot in the water, but it's just telling my brain and my body that, hey, it's okay, it's just a little bit of carbon dioxide. I'm gonna swim these underwater. Let's do it. It's a 54 second lap. Twenty-four seconds. I beat I beat my previous time by six seconds. Gosh, 
during the dive screener, your heart rate's so much lower. But the thing that gets me is, hey, if I need help, ain't nobody gonna come save me and my arms are tied. It's just tough to get over that mental barrier. I feel a lot better about it. I've been doing lots of training and I feel, feel confident about it. So let's get it, baby. So two minutes of bobs, two minutes of float, travel 25 meters down, 25 meters back, 50 meters total. And then I'll go into the final sequence of bobs with the front flip, a back flip, mass retrieval out the door. First few times I failed on the front flip. So it was a huge mental barrier for me, but I know if I can do the front flip, I can pass this test. So if you watch him, he's like going real slow, which is nice. So that means he's chilling, he's relaxed. So he's taking his time, he's not rushing it. There's no reason to rush this first part because it's for time. 20 more seconds for this. So now he's gonna get the float command. Float, float. Two minutes of float, travel. Notice his hands and feet are tied, right? So he's, he's literally training himself in a survival situation right now. Five more seconds, travel. So right now he's identifying his mask and he's starting to game plan in his head how he's gonna drop into his final approach. This is the last sequence, all right. At this point, my brain is screaming, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So the only way I can complete the front flip is to turn my brain off. So I'm focusing on my surroundings as much as possible instead of the lack of oxygen. With both flips done, all I can think about is the mask. Nice. He's in the zone now. So we got, we're further than last time. This is it. This is the moment. I grabbed the mask, drank a mouthful of water, and headed to the surface. So he's got four more bobs on the mask and he's complete. So you got it. This is last one. Done. He did it. And then I felt it, that breakthrough. I was finally able to take back control of my mind. He's just, he's in the zone now. He's just gonna keep. See, so he, had, he had a breakthrough, right? He figured out that he could do it. Now he's not stopping, he's just keeping going. So he's passed his five bobs. He's just now proving to himself what he's got. <laughs> Yo, you didn't want to stop. I felt a point, <laughs> I felt a point where every ounce of me just wanted to stop. And, and it, was, it was after that first bob with the mask. Yeah. And I was like, this dam of stress and anxiety towards the water and towards this test just broke. And it was, it was kind of crazy. You know, this was not just to prove to anybody else but myself that I can stay calm and, and be okay and be, and be good and have control of my brain. What's your biggest takeaway? What did you learn from it for yourself? Last time, my mind retreated. And the more we retreat in the mind as humans, the softer we will become. Now, me retreating from it twice and just quitting and just feeling like I couldn't do it had built up even more of an, you know, this massive piece of anxiety in my head. And this right here was starting to spill over into other areas of my life. When you, when you get, find yourself at an obstacle like that, lean in, approach versus avoid. Good job leaning in and showing us that you could do it, man. All right, let's get the out of here. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me why I put myself through these challenges. You know, when I see an obstacle, I see an opportunity. And when I feel fear, I know I have room to grow. That's how I train my mind. Because as athletes, we put our bodies through so much to make them stronger. So shouldn't we be doing the same thing with our minds? So let me ask you this. What's something you're afraid of? And when's the last time you trained for it? <laughs>